He said Maga's the perfect example of why anti-grenade is needed. I mean, I don't think it's like... I, I, and, and maybe this is a more of a hot take. I don't think it's necessarily like... I don't mind going against it. I think more people's issue now is that it's just kind of like the go-to. Like, it becomes more along the lines of like... It's just like you're consistently going up against on a grenade. I think that's the... the, the so it's more like you just your experience of playing the game is constantly purpled. And I think it happens more and more to tanks than any other role, regardless of the tank. Um, but, you know, that's like... That's just because most tanks don't have shields anymore. So you just kind of... Ana throws a purple at you, you get rolled, and then your teammates can't catch up on the heels on you, and you kind of just go, well, that was fun. Uh, but that also could be a positioning thing, too. So Maybe they reduce the timing of the anti-grenade. I mean... <sighs> They've already done that in general. I it, it's, I think they're just gonna. I more than likely they'll probably just keep it that way, and then just kind of see how it goes. Maybe like, I don't know. I don't. I, I feel like they would have changed some of it by now. Although we don't know what they're doing in season nine, so they have talked about some like major changes in season nine that they haven't even talked about yet. So maybe we'll kind of see what they're going with that, and maybe that will result in a better scenario with that one. I, I think they recently said in the post the reason why they like having anti grenade is because it 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 helps. It helps deal with the amount of healing in the game. And then they said that... Oh, what's the exact quote? I know it was on the Reddit AMA. I probably should have, like, actually went over that Reddit AMA. So I'm not, like, paraphrasing or getting, like, half of this, like, correct. Basically, it sounds like it's not, like, the anti-grenade they're worried about. They're worried more about... They're, they're more worried about the amount of healing in the game in comparison. Which makes sense because they've had a buff healing over the... I, I think there's going to be a constant back and forth between that and Overwatch where, like, they're going to focus on something. They're going to go, okay, this is an issue, right? And, and let, me, let me kind of talk about it, like, with this. Like, I, I think this is kind of where you're seeing Overwatch. It's a year ago, supports were not good at the beginning of Overwatch. They were not good. A couple of them were decent. Actually, Ana Grenade and Ana was, was, was really good, but, like, Ana was a hero that was, I mean, uh, t support was the weakest role, right? When they went into Overwatch, so they did that. So they spent a year... They spent a year focusing on making it so supports were really strong. They wanted to make supports be a hero you wanted to play because before it was like, okay, they always had a way to supports. What am I doing? Am I playing ranked? Um, so now, a year later, they're, they're looking at it and going, okay, now healing's become a, uh, uh, an issue because there's too much of it. So that's why I'm curious to see what they do with Season 9 because it sounds like what they want to do is like they recognize that every year the game might change, especially as they make that balance. And it kind of, the balance changes will kind of have this like domino effect. Right, where they start with one balance, they do another balance to help with that balance, they, 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 they have a vision of where they want to go, and then it, it reaches a point of, like, it's really strong. Then they're like, okay, we need to reset that, but how do you do that without just nerfing a hero? So, like, I think what they're doing is they're, that's probably what Season 9 is, is just, like, refocusing on what they want to do for the next year of making the game, you know. So it kind of changes a bit based off of that, so you're not just playing against the same exact thing every single time. Like, well, Power Creep, etc. Yeah, Power Creep can happen. And I think sometimes what happens with Power Creep is they... You go two ways with that. You just keep power creeping everything, or you just go, okay, you know what? Let's just like do like a reset. It sounds like they're going down the vision of resetting a little bit and kind of like redoing a few things. So, I, and that's probably fine, right? I, I, I don't. It's it's so hard to say because as Overwatch players and anybody who's played Overwatch One like knows this, we're not really when it comes to cons consistent balance changes and changes to the game. When it comes to like massive shifts into the game we're just not used to it right obviously overwatch 2 was a massive shift going from 6v6 to 5v5 but we're not really quite used to seeing a game shift every few months or every year to something different like we're, we're just used to like really hardcore metas that last for a long time and nothing changes and then eventually it just kind of like overwatch 2 a eh? you know whether or not you disagree or agree with buffs and stuff like there's been a a, a fairly decent back and forth balance is just like they change things a lot so like we're still not even quite used to that in Overwatch because we just that was just not a thing that we ever saw in Overwatch like they, they would like they wouldn't change anything so it's it's been fairly cool to see that obviously there's going to be metas that you're not going to like metas that are going to be more difficult balance that may not be as perfect um each season, but it's been really interesting and like, like I haven't minded seeing like a shift and stuff. So you said just remove 
the rolls and then balance it would be okay, you said all they need to do is remove the rolls and then be done with it won't be unbalanced anymore oh no oh no <laughs> listen I, I can tell you right now I could I could tell you right now that would not be the case Basically, what happens at that point is, then you get into, you know, you get into the hero stacking, uh, or the roll stacking, which is, like, there's just so many variations of stuff that will happen. You said, what you mean lately is that heroes that are just breaking balance more? I, a new hero will generally do that better. Like, a new hero is, I'll give you an idea on this one, and, and, and Chad, I hope you're enjoying the deep discussions about Overwatch here. So basically... A new hero in, in Overwatch is generally supposed to be like a meta breaker or like a hero that will shift how the game is played them. Then they take time to figure out the balance of that hero, get the hero where they want it to. But like a, a lot of the time that's what like when they introduce a new hero in Overwatch, it's always been that way, right? It's like always been that way, so. Um, it, it, it's, we kind of saw it happen when they introduced a hero that didn't do anything at the beginning. And people were like, wait, why are you not having this? This hero isn't doing anything. What are you doing? Which was Life Weaver. Life Weaver's good now, but when Life Weaver was released, it was like, uh, what are, what am I, what are we supposed to do? Like, huh? <laughs> like, what's the... <laughs> so... I, I, new heroes will do that. New heroes will shift metas. New heroes... And that's kind of what happened in Overwatch 1. Whenever there was a new hero, it would shift a meta, or at least try to. Um, I, I actually, if I recall correctly, keep in mind, when I say this hero, I'm saying originally. This is very much like the Life Weaver. This is not later on. Arissa. I think when Arissa was first released, Arissa wasn't playing. Keep in mind, that changed. That changed, right? But I, I feel like when Arista was first released, there wasn't much of like a, a shift in the meta at that point. That was a later on issue. That's when, because that, that was actually when Sigma got released, then you had more of the double shift. Uh, initially, there wasn't much of a shift. But I mean, I, balance is going to be one of those back and forth things that's extremely difficult. And, and, and this, once again, could be a hot take. I do like that in Season 9, they're willing to kind of shift something in the game. They're not telling us what that is. We don't know if it's burst healing. We don't know if they're increasing damage by 600% on tanks. So like, that way, you know, maybe maybe instead of, you know, there being too much healing, you just have tanks get one shot, right? Like imagine if they increased Widow's damage to 750% on tanks. Now that's not an issue. You don't even have to worry about getting anti-grenaded as a tank because you just go back to spawn immediately, right? So maybe they're going down that route. But uh, point I'm trying to make is I'm glad that they're at least willing to make like those major overhauls when they feel like the game's hit a point where like, you know, it becomes like, oh, you just get anti-grenaded every game. So you hope they aren't overselling the significance of Season 9? Well, I mean, here's the good news. They already have a new rank system coming pretty much in Season 9, so even if they did, even if, like, the Season 9, like, changes they're making is like, oh, you know, all supports do 1% less healing now, right? Like, they still have the Season 9 rank changes to go off of, too, so they're fine. Season on release was peak Overwatch, Nano given... Speed to Reaper Alt. You, you want to hear a fun story? When Ana was first released, keep in mind this was with barely any changes, right? When Ana was first released, people were like, "This, what is this hero? Is it good? What's going on here? Like, are you kidding me? Like, what? Like, this is not. Who's gonna even play Ana? Like, are you kidding me? It took like four months, three or four months. People are like, wait a second, this is OP. Is this is ridiculously OP? Because when you would nano somebody, it gave them speed boost. But it took like months. It took months for Ana to become like even remotely playable in a lot of comps. Like nobody was playing Ana. It was a lot of like it was a lot of like Mercy Lucio. But yeah, that was a strat that. But that was that was Overwatch. Um, very much at the beginning of that too. But yeah, I mean, but I have no idea. Like I, I, I'm, I just like. I, maybe I just because in Overwatch one I was so used to not having any changes or anything. I'm just like whenever I like go, oh, there's balance changes. I'm like, yeah, let's go. 
Like, we get, we would get excited in like Overwatch One when they were like, "Hey, we're gonna, there's gonna be a, a patch." We're like, "Whoa, a patch!" What? And they're like, "Yeah, it's gonna, we're gonna, it's gonna be the event from last year." We're like, "Oh, whoa!" Oh. Now we're like, "Yeah, let's go. We got new stuff." Like, that, that's what that's what it was like. Like. So now it's like, they're like, hey, we got a new weapon charm. We're like, 10 minute video. Let's go. Heck yeah. Like we got, we got new sh Before it was like, you got nothing. You got excited for a free for all death match. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you, what, what do you mean? Dude, listen. Dude, this, this, this was us when they released a, a, a death match map, right? This is that. This is us when they released a death match map. After Overwatch 2 was announced. Because we didn't get anything, so it was like, oh, new deathmatch map? Okay. Is there, is there a release date? Okay, I'm looking at the bottom left of the... I see something. There's two... I see it. There's two two rocks. Does that mean Overwatch 2? Let's go look up at the sky up here. That, that was that was Overwatch 1 towards, like, the last three years. So, it, chat's always like, why, you know, it, it, why, why I get excited about, like, new stuff and, like, hearing, like, oh, we're making major changes in Season 9. I get excited because I'm just... I played I played 30 games of Ranked during Overwatch 1. Listen, you, you tell me you're just going to be a change to something in Overwatch, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I, I'm excited when I see bug fixes. Yeah, he's, he's looking for something brand new on it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I, like the, I like the release of, like, their, 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 their content now, right? I think... I think sometimes the arguments people will want to see is like they want to see more of like kind of like limited time events being kind of more like the you know the Halloween one we saw at the beginning of Overwatch 2 or even like the I mean I know some people had like you know some people didn't like it as much but I, I, I actually to be honest with you Chad I, I actually I liked the Diablo um, like version they did I thought that was really cool I actually enjoyed that I thought there could be more more in-depth like stuff to it but I thought overall it, it was a fun event and I like that so I think one of the arguments people have with some of like the limited time events they would like to see more of that well I mean we're gonna be seeing more of that like they already announced like a what a new prop hunt map stuff coming like I mean honestly yeah, people were pumped about that so when they start I think with limited time events they probably got a lot of feedback over the last year and they kind of know now what people are looking for in comparison to what people are looking for um, beforehand with those events and they can kind of build off of that I mean obviously I don't know how long it takes to create those type of events, of course, right? Like, I don't, I don't think, I don't, like, I, I, it can take a bit. But I think they have a better idea now of... I don't know, I'd like to see more of what they did with Cactus Puppy. Like, in general, with, like, uh, with, um... Like, like, for example, like, I would love if they could, like, do something, you know, more like they did, like, with Cactus Puppy. Cactus Puppy had that season where he made the, the mo. He says... The huge W over this year was communication. Oh yeah, I mean th they went from not telling people anything in Overwatch to they probably they probably watch these interviews now and they go, uh oh, uh oh, and not because like they they leak something. They'll be like, did you bring up hero bands? They're like, yeah, we were just talking about it. Uh oh. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like, and 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 and, but it's cool that they they have that communication now, and like they they like have like these deep discussions with the game because like I prefer that type of communication than not saying anything at all of that. So I, I'm a, I'm a cool with it. Is it Sai? He already has a video, but there's nothing wrong with that though. Like, I, I I I have whenever I see like videos that are discussing like subjects of things that could happen in Overwatch, I don't mind that because like. I don't know about you, chat, but for me personally, whenever I, like, have something I enjoy watching or, like, I do, I, I don't mind listening to, like, stuff about the game, even if it's not released yet or even if it never gets released. I, I don't mind those type of discussions and videos, etc. Well, I think, I think when it comes to hero bands, it sounds to me like they're trying to more address the... the, the counter-swap issue. I think, I feel like that's more along the lines of what they're, they're trying to discuss. Um, more than they are, like, just trying to do, like, a... The, the problem is, is that a lot of counter swapping, I feel like, doesn't really happen from... Uh, maybe I'm just biased here. It feels like it more happens directly to a tank Finally, than it does to a... Um, 
a lot of other heroes because there just isn't a tank is just the most obvious counter swap you can do. So hey, yeah, hey, chats asked me what my take on hero bans and all of this. I mean, you know what my take is? I it'd be something I'd have to test to really see how it would play. My initial take is I don't think it would work as well as it sounds or it could, and I, just for multiple reasons. Um, at the same time, if like they're willing to do like a limited test with it, I'm, of course I I would test it and see how it feels. Like I, I sometimes. To give you an idea, chat, things on paper to me, like, I'll, I'll see it, I'll be like, oh, that's not going to be good, right? And then it ends up being good, or it ends up being better, or it ends up being worse. I, 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 I like to at least give it a, for me, like, I would like to try, like, you know, okay, if they're, gonna, if they're looking into doing something like that, maybe I'll try a limited event if they ever do that, or see how it plays, right? And then be able to give even more direct feedback on it than just kind of, like, my initial reaction. Like, for example, I'll give you an example of, like, an initial reaction out of me that I think, like, honestly, when it comes to the ability, I, I, I probably wasn't as correct on. I thought Vortex was an absolute meme. When it was, when, when, when Ramatra released with Vortex. Chat knows this. Honestly, Ramatra Vortex ain't that bad. I get, the, I, I understand how to use it. I understand where it's good. I understand the value in it. Right? You said Flats brought up a good point. People would ban heroes for getting advantage over one tricks. Oh, I mean, I, let me make this very... I'll make I'll make this very clear on my uh, on my take on the on the on the on that aspect of it. If they if they release a a hero pick ban system ever, they should make it so you have no idea who you're playing against, or like you can't see what people's most played heroes are, or you can't like see their names, um, because then like that would just become an automatic. People would just automatically do that. That would that wouldn't even be. That would just be yeah no. It would have to be something where you wouldn't be able to see like the, the names of the people or like. Especially in top 500. But even then, like, that's why I mean, like, this is stuff that I think needs to be tested anyway. And I don't expect them just to release it and be like, hello! Like... You know what I mean? Like, I don't expect them just to, like, that's it. Like, I think it's something they would probably test. And I think that Alec has even mentioned, like, they want to test it and see how it would play. If they ever do go that route. Keep in mind, and I, and I think this is another... Another thing that... I, I like to bring up in these situations when they have, like, things they're talking about. Just because they're talking about something in the game, too, does not mean it's going to be something they're even going to ever do. It's talking about things that they have looked into and understand, like, they're more bringing up the idea of, like, these are the type of things we look into. And it's not that they won't try that. It's, like, some things they talk about will never actually come into fruition because they just... Things they test and an idea they like, but it may not result in something that they actually end up thinking will be good for the game, etc. You know what I'm saying? Just because they talk about something doesn't necessarily mean they're actually going to implement that into the game. It's just something that they've, like, have the idea on. Doesn't mean, keep in mind, it doesn't mean they won't do hero bans or things like that. It's more on the lines of they have that, in general, so. You said you've never even seen Swampin' as a problem? I, I think each player is going to have a different experience with that. that. That's my take on that one. I think each player will have a different experience with, with when it comes to, like, hero swaps. Well, as a tank, the, the, the problem you run into as a tank with, with hero swapping is that... Not only can every role consistently do it like that, but what's the way, what's the way to explain this? There's just a rotation you end up on, on tanks. We're like, because there's only one tank and the other tank is only one tank, if you're really just trying to be that person who wants to just like constantly counter swap your other tank, you can easily do that. DPS, there's there's two DPS. Supports, there, there, there's two there's two supports. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, because of that, like you're, you're going to, like, tank is going to get counter swap because it's just an easier counter swap to happen. Like, you can just easily counter swap that hero and be in a good spot, right? Like, it's just, like, tank, there's one tank. So, that, that's, that's what you run into with, with counter swaps. That, that's what happens. Like, that, that's why tanks are swapped on so much is because it's just an easy counter swap. It's just like, there's one tank. I know exactly how to directly swap heroes on this tank, and then I'm going to go to the, like, that's how it works with that, right? Like, it's, just, it's just easy to do that. Is there any tank that is very difficult to counter with another tank? Sigma. And that's not because, like, like you can go Rhine, but I think there's there's multiple... How do I... Uh, there's multiple pieces to counter in Sigma um, that is more than just, like, a direct hero swap. Like, if you want to go Rhine against Sigma, you better hope that you also have a Lucio in that comp, right? Um... Keep in mind, I play a lot of Sigma, and I think on, on the flip side of that, I, I still think Sigma is more one of the well-balanced heroes. I think that in current Overwatch, which could change in Season 9, especially with some of the discussions they're having, in current Overwatch, Sigma is really strong because of how the game is currently played, not because Sigma is inherently overtuned. I, 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 Sigma's, Sigma's not overtuned. Sigma is just one of the few tanks right now that can really 
prevent a lot of the stuff that happens in Overwatch in comparison to a lot of other stuff. So, like, an example of that is, like, you can block on a grenade. You can, you can block a crap ton of the damage that Overwatch currently has. You can block heals. You can eat damage from a window. You can eat a Yari ultimate. Like, you have all these things that can prevent as much damage that happens to a tank consistently and hope that it's enough to not still get one shot. When I say one shot, that's the feeling of being one shot. I'm not saying that a hero is hitting me for 550 damage. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Annihilator, thanks to the 11 months of the features process. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. So, anyway, that's my discussion on that one.